Minerva worktops are supplied in robust packaging and all surfaces are factory finished ready for fitting. When opening, cut the cardboard and protective film carefully away from the product, ready to check all surfaces prior to fitting. If your installation uses more than one worktop, you must check for colour consistency. This is easily done by putting the two pieces together and wiping the surface with a damp cloth. In the unlikely event that the two surfaces do not match to your requirements, do not proceed with the installation, as any claims made after installation are not covered by the product's warranty. With decors such as Carrera White, the unique pattern on each worktop may make it impossible to disguise the position of the joint. Whilst it will be seamless and impervious to any dirt or moisture, the joint may cut through the veining, making it more visible than you would get with other decors. For each joint that you undertake, you will need one Minerva joint kit. Each kit contains everything you need. Isopropyl alcohol wipes, color match two-part adhesive sachet, three grades of sandpaper and red abrasive pad for finishing, MDF blocks, and a copy of the installation, care and maintenance booklet, which should be used in conjunction with this video. The measuring process is exactly as you would do with other work surfaces. Here we are simply trimming the Minerva to size using a circular saw. Next, a straight edge is clamped to the surface in order to cut the female side of the joint. We are just cutting 2 to 3 millimeters off the front edge to remove the slight profile and leave a square edge ready to accept the male side of the joint. The male side is cut with the board upside down. This will compensate for any difference in the vertical angle of the cut made by your router. If it is not practical to do this, you may simply need to flatten the cut edges to ensure a good fit between the two components. With the male side turned face up again, the end is sanded slightly to match the rounded part of the female joint where the cut starts. Each face is keyed slightly with 120 grit paper on a flat sanding block. This is similar to the male and female joints achieved when using a mason's mitre jig. With the worktops in situ, then check the fit and level of the join. Remember, if the dry fit is not perfect, then this will affect the quality of the finished join. For most of this demonstration, we will be using the MDF block method, but an alternative is to use seam setters or joint pullers, which use vacuum suction pads and a series of adjustable controls to assist the jointing and leveling process. Whichever method you use, at this stage it is vital to clean the joint using the wipes provided in the kit. These will remove dirt, debris and any pen or pencil marks from the faces being joined. Two layers of masking tape are then applied around 3mm from the edge of each joint line. These will help to save time later in the sanding process. Three pairs of MDF blocks are then bonded either side of the joint with hot melt glue and pressed firmly into place. With the joint prepared and three clamps ready to use, the adhesive can now be mixed. The grey divider is carefully removed and the adhesive mixed in the sachet, ensuring that the two parts are thoroughly mixed. A small corner is cut off the sachet which is rolled up to pipe the adhesive along either side of the join. A clean blade or spatula is used to spread the adhesive on both faces. This also helps prevent the adhesive running off. The two worktops are pulled together, pulled apart slightly, and then more adhesive applied to the top edge to fill any slight gaps in the bead. Then the three clamps are used to pull the joint firmly together. The level of the joint can be checked with the spatula at this stage and any minor adjustments made. 
the working time of the adhesive is around 8 to 10 minutes, depending on the ambient temperature. The spatula is then used to remove excess glue from the joint. This is only lightly passed over the surface, as it's important that the adhesive is left on the surface to allow for the shrinkage that will occur as it cures. While the adhesive is still wet, the masking tape is removed, leaving a narrow bead of adhesive. This is also a good time to remove any excess that may have oozed out from the inside corner of the joint, as this can be tricky to remove once cured. The full cure time of the adhesive depends on the ambient temperature, but can be up to 45 minutes. The MDF blocks are simply removed by lightly tapping with a hammer. Then the remaining bead of adhesive is sanded off using a random orbital sander and the three grades of sandpaper. 120 grit, then 240 grit, and then 320 grit, each time working in a slightly wider area in horizontal and vertical sweeps and ensuring that excess dust is removed each time the sandpaper is changed. The final stage is a wet process using the red abrasive pad. The speed of the sander is slowed and the extraction removed. The finished joint is wiped down, cleaned with a damp cloth and checked.